reawaken to your immortal identity. And discover life between life's wisdom. Presented by the Michael Newton Institute. Welcome to Discover Life Between Lives Wisdom podcast. In this two part episode, we're exploring the topic of paranormal and how removal, clearing, and detaching from lower dimensional entities is essential to our soul sovereignty. Today's guest is psychic medium, author of the book Soul Tribe, and founder of the karmic path, Laura Fentine. Laura was a school teacher until one day the paranormal descended upon their home. And it all began with a ghost child named Annabelle. Laura had to learn how to protect her daughter and save the family's soul. So before we get started, would you please close your eyes just for a second? And I want you now to take a deep breath in, breathing in and centering yourself within the heart. Breathing in light and breathing out and releasing all tension. And as you breathe in light and as you release tension in your natural rhythm, I want you to ask your spiritual team to protect your sacred space from all and any energies that do not serve your highest good. Asking your spiritual team to protect your sacred space from any and all energies that do not serve your highest good. Breathing in light, releasing tension. And take another breath. And when you exhale, open your eyes. And now, enjoy this two-part episode with special guest, Laura Fantine. Hi, Rebecca, and thank you so much. Laura, a very, very, very warm welcome to the Michael Newton Institute's Wisdom Series podcast. We're, we're so grateful that you're here with us today. And thank, uh, you. thank you. And we're delving into an interesting, fascinating, and sometimes uh, a topic that I've noticed a lot of people shy away from or feel uncomfortable with. And as a spiritual hypnotherapist, as regression therapist, as uh, consciousness uh, collaborators, uh, we are delving into the world of paranormal. And uh, before we kind of embark on this fascinating journey ahead, can you share with our viewers what in your understanding, in your, in your uh, uh, definition, if I would use that word, of what paranormal would mean? That's a great question. Paranormal be means beyond what is normal. So we are all human beings, we are, we touch, taste, smell, feel. We have these tangible senses about us. This is our normal range. Our paranormal range is the unseen world. And the unseen energies and entities that Im they impact us every day, every moment of every day. Now, it's not something that we need to be afraid of because knowledge is power. But the paranormal, and we talk about psychics having paranormal abilities and all of this stuff. But the truth is, is that we are all psychic, but our psychic abilities vary between all of us. So I can see your sense of ghost, or I can feel a ghost, or I get an impression. Our gut instinct, our intuition, however, is our most profound psychic ability. And it all comes down to energy. So in the paranormal world, it's simply energies and entities. The entities are energies. 
we are energy beings. We are beings of God. We are beings of light source. Those are energetic signatures. And so with the paranormal, what we need to understand is that every culture throughout history, throughout region, 500 BC, India, 1600 AD, Ireland, 1950 to the United States. We all have words for ghosts, angels, and demons. Every culture tells ghost stories, right? So if this unseen world didn't exist, how could we have those connections? True, so true. So that's my definition of the paranormal. It's just simply the unseen world. So true. And uh, I think uh, when we can uh, demystify it, then that fear element goes away. Uh, a Absolutely. large part of it is there's so much of dramatization and I understand why that's done. But uh, this brings me, you know, uh, when we are in our sessions and let's say an entity appears or, and I call it a, a, a foreign energy. Why foreign? Because it's alien to me. So what's the general approach in the therapy that you take on? Is it that you sense the presence or the client senses or you both sense or perceive or see? How would you approach it in, in the work that you do? For me, I find it to be very important. So I have different types of sessions, past life regressions, mm -hmm. but also sessions where the, the client or the person is in a more of a, an awakened state. Mm -hmm. But it's really important that when I do a past life regression, I eventually start to see through that person's eyes. So I get a sense of what's going on because I also... It is a control issue. And when I come across entities, my first question is I never trust them. I don't care if it is an, a saint. I don't care if it is Jesus. I don't care if it is Buddha. I don't trust that. I do, however, use a lot of methods and techniques of discernment. Mm -hmm. Let's pretend that uh, Buddha shows up. How do I know that's really him? How do I know it's not a shapeshifter? How do I know it's not a thought form? So one of the easiest techniques that we can use is just to simply visualize ourselves pouring salt over that being. If that being stays, salt cleanses in all dimensions. It cleanses wounds, right? It cleanses it's all dimensions. And we can create salt in our mind because our minds are very, very powerful. So I'm literally just focusing in on pouring down this rain of salt over this Buddha creature. If he stays the same, he does not shapeshift, chances are I have the real deal. But if he shapeshifts into a dark entity or any other entity, or it disappears, I know that I, I am blessed that I thwarted a possible contamination. Mm -hmm. I do many other types of discernment too. You can visualize yourself pouring frankincense or myrrh. Those are very high frequency substances. So nobody ever asked, gee, why was the Christ child gifted tree sap, right? <laughs> Those are high frequency substances. Frankincense, gold, and myrrh are high frequency. So when he came down here, he knew, his team knew, God knew he needed some type of protection to clear himself. So if it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for us. So that's just a couple of ways that I do that. You know, it's so interesting you shared this because I remember when we were growing up, uh, this was a very common thing back home where around dusk, uh, most uh, uh, families that you know we knew about, at least in our house, I remember this very well, they would light camphor. Mm -hmm. And it would be taken all around the house, the entrance, the backyard, we had a huge garden, all the entry exit points. And we used to wonder, it was like military precision, Laura, every single day it would be done. You know, if mom didn't do it, the aunts did it, somebody did it, but it was done. And now that, you know, we're doing the kind of work that we do, we realize camphor is a very common uh, substance, just like frankincense, myrrh, and uh, sage even, I think. Uh, these are used, these substances were used to clear the energy space of anything that could be perceived as disturbing. Yes, absolutely. And 
the reason why they're done at dusk or in the nighttime is because that's when the energy calms down and it makes it easier for them to travel at night. Yes. So by doing those clearing practices in the evening, you're mm -hmm. creating a safer space for you and your loved ones every night. Yes, yes. So true, so true. And I think uh, and this brings me next, you know, to the next question that, you know, a, a client who's probably had to uh, live with, if I may use that term, with let's say a shapeshifter or a walk-in, a parasite, a, a, a stalker or a, a squatter. There's so many different kinds or the different uh, words we might use or phrases, or definitions we might use of these energies who literally live off you or live in you or with you. And a client is not always aware. Many times we pick up the signs, but if as a therapist, uh, if you could share that what are the signs a client should look out for that can make them realize or make them feel that, okay, I have an issue and I need to address this. Because so many times we've had a naughty inner child try to play with the therapist by making you want to think that it's a, it's a, it's an, it's a foreign energy or you're, you're dealing with. We've had clients do that, but a very controlling inner child plays with you. Or sometimes even a past life personality can do an unhealed one. And, uh, but how do you differentiate and what are the signs one should look out for? Well, the differentiation I think is key because when we're working with the unseen world, we need to categorize what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. It's no different than our scientists. They have the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom. They break them down to the phylum, the species, the genus. Yeah. It's the same thing. So let's say I'm dealing with some reptilian energies. Well, what type? Are they the, the larger warrior type? Are they the smaller type that are in control of everything? Are they, you know, working with the grays? Okay, what type of gray? So there's many and regular standard what I call black magicians, which are those kind of like those bony creatures. There's also those um, wraiths like we would see in like a Harry Potter film. Those mm -hmm. exist also so the first thing we need to do is figure out what we're dealing with and and then we deal with it and then when I work with a client we work together as a team this is so important because Indrani I know and Vivekya I know you guys both feel the same way it's like I could tell you guys anything how do you know it's true so true. when you have that experience of working with the practitioner one-on-one -on -one as a team and not somebody telling you something, you. you keep your personal power. You're not, and unfortunately, many people just want to hand that personal power over to somebody, a spiritual practitioner on that proverbial silver platter. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous. This is yeah. you, your soul, your life. You own it. You need to learn. This is building a strong and healthy soul for you and it echoes out to the family so as we're working with them and we figure out what they are what they're doing I am very blessed to have a very strong spiritual team whom by the way every time I call on them I do practices of due diligence because I know an imposter can come into my spiritual team yes right I'm never going to just assume that you know my guys are my guys so when we do this, I give them specific instructions to remove, I put them in a containment field. So let's say we're dealing with reptilians, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm able to put them in a containment field. My client can see that. And sometimes we'll do a little bit of a question and answer because I wanna know how they got there. Yeah. What did my client do to make access to them easier? What did my client do to make access to them harder? knowledge is power and then i do have my teams take that containment field full of the dark entities or energies back to god source creator mm. if anybody is to say they buried them they bound them up or they casted them away those are the wrong answers and for anybody who is seeking spiritual practitioner advice or healing ask that practitioner questions you would do it for your child's pediatrician. 
You would do it for the plumbers that are going into your house. You would do it for your lawyer. You would do it for your hairdresser. Mm -hmm. But people don't think to ask spiritual practitioners questions. How do you remove them? Do they come back? What's your protocol? And if you don't like their answers, trust your gut. So it's owning our power is what we're doing with this. And so for me, it's always important to send the dark side back to God's source creator because it gets them off of our playing field. It yes. removes them permanently. It doesn't mean something new can't come in, but we. I also work on teaching my clients, what can you do to create a stronger foundation so they cannot come back in? Yes. Uh and I, and I think, uh, as I speak for myself, and I think Rebecca does probably the same thing, but we all have this practice where we uh, encourage and we empower our uh, clients to learn literally the ways to do shielding, the ways to protect, the ways to ground, because some people have this, uh, and I've, I've seen it with a particular, particular few clients, they have this amazing talent, if I may use that word, of picking up energy. They literally like magnets walking about. And, and my, my whole thing is that what is it in you that's enabling it? So while we're addressing in whoever you, and I've had a, a client actually very interestingly say, I'm like a portal. And if they have to go back to source, then I'm the one they go back through. So I said, so this is your belief that you've created, which means you're perpetually keeping yourself open to keep attracting whatever you're attracting to walk in. And then through you, you allow that to go back to source. Now, the thing is that obviously there's something it feeds, and this would be then my next question, that there are clients who have this pattern of picking up energy or attracting energy or allowing energies, energies in plural, to actually um, live in. And the question would be, why? Why would you do that? And what is it that you're feeding? And then again and again, they come back for it to be cleared. So it's somewhere I feel it's very interesting to go address that part of the, the person. And sometimes in LBL sessions, we've seen even in their meetings with their guides or the council, we find out why has this soul chosen in this incarnation on earth to go through this kind of a cycle or this kind of a pattern? Can, can you tell me something uh, from your perspective, if you've had clients like this, and what are the learnings they shared with you, or what came out in their sessions? A lot of times it's ego, right? I I'm, am oh, powerful. I can create portals. Um, and uh, interesting, you mentioned the portal thing. I have had a client who he actually texted me and said, hey, I was in meditation and I'm told I'm supposed to open up this portal and it's beautiful and I can see it and blah, blah, blah. She goes, but I wanted to know what you thought first. And I'm like, well, let's look. And we looked and this portal that was presented to her was beautiful. It had beautiful sound to it, beautiful light to it. But when we started clearing it, it turned into a swastika. So what if my client had opened that? she would be karmically responsible for opening up a portal of Nazi energy. And that is a big deal. She was wise enough to say, wow, this is amazing, but she didn't have the ego to go barging through. And a lot of times it can be an ego thing, but it can also be, do they have some very superior dark entities as their proverbial spiritual team yes. and they have their hooks in them and what has to happen is that person has to work really hard to break those ties yeah. it's not easy but it's worth it so i always ask is your soul worth it mm. if you we have our physical health and vibeki i know we've had this conversation our we have our mental health our physical health our emotional health we talk about our financial health, but how often do we talk about our soul health? So true, so true. This soul is the only thing I have that I take with me yeah. in my lifetime between lives and in my lifetime. This is it. So I want to create my healthiest soul possible. Yeah. 
And I also want to create the best spiritual team that can support me and my soul, mm -hmm. not out of ego, but out of service and service to others. True. Very, very true. Very true. Uh, and, and, you know, that brings me to this uh, understanding that uh, when you mentioned the word ego, uh, we've had a very interesting a, a few cases. I remember one particular one, Laura, and it would be interesting to share this. The uh, entity had actually uh, joined with the body when I think the child, if I remember clearly, was in the mother's womb. So it was a very interesting session because uh, we had to first understand what was the whole connection. And, and I think the concept of karma was again and again playing up in her session where there was some sort of a karmic uh, triangulation, if I may say, between that entity, the mother, soul and the girl, uh, girl and imagine she's born with the entity so it's literally like two of them housed in one body and uh, for, for the longest uh, you know she's always felt there's disconnection from the body not being able to fully own the body and that's what had brought her into the session but when we were tracing back in the lbl we found this whole connection that she believed she had which needed there, there was a disassociation required for her to enable herself to let that entity go so it was it was as if she was so used to having that entity live with her uh, and I think you must have had so many such cases where the client himself or herself finds it difficult to disconnect disassociate or disengage I recently worked with somebody about two weeks ago his entire lifetime, he kept, he, he heard voices in his head all the time, mm -hmm. telling him to harm the dog, telling him to harm his sister, telling him to do all of these nefarious activities. Mm -hmm. And he tried to get rid of the voices through using drugs, through mm -hmm. all kinds of manners. Um, even ayahuasca and those types of spiritual drugs, which I have a is personal issue with, we don't need to use a drug to connect to God or divine or source. So, so, and sure. so I worked with him and it only took an hour. And we removed all of those voices, all of those entities and energies that had been with him for many lifetimes. They owned the family lineage and it went back, I think, 13 or 14 generations. Wow. Wow. We removed the family lineage and... I know it worked because he texted me just maybe four or five days ago saying, I don't know what to do with all the quiet. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. And for him, I said, you know, we need to have a follow-up conversation consult because we don't want any void space. We want to yeah. fill it with Christ-like consciousness. We want to fill it with something positive we want to start shifting his spiritual team mm -hmm. but our spiritual teams are karmically earned it's not like i can snap my fingers and say hey i want this person and this person this person mm -hmm. they're karmically earned lifetime after lifetime mm -hmm. and the beneficial ones are here to assist us and the nefarious ones are here to take our energies because those dark sources those dark energies and entities when they left, I call them, when I'm out speaking, the Luciferic forces. Mm -hmm. Now, the Luciferic forces come in many flavors, okay? They can be the reptilians, they can be the insectoids, they can be the hat man, they can be a black magician, they can be a living person, even. When they left the light of God, they're like, oh, snap, I, I need a food source. I don't have any energy. Where am I going to get this energy? Well, there, hey, there's those humans down there. Those humans are of God. I'll just attach myself to them and start siphoning off their energies. This is a problem. And we as humanity have been just burying our heads in the sand for millennia saying, I just don't want to deal with it. It's too scary. But it gives them the opportunity. Their superpower is that we can't see them readily. Our superpower is that we have physical bodies that make us 10,000 times stronger, but we have to be aware. 